Mä Juli. Mä luon Maikaa Koo. My name is Joshua Noma. I am Kanako Oivi. Hawaii is my ancestral homeland. And I come to tell you that we are continuously under attack. But before I go into the details of how we're under attack, let me first tell you who I am and where I come from. Some of you guys may recognize my last name. Yes, I am from the Noma Inga. Nico, Al, Pete, Noma are the younger brothers of my father, John Noma. My family came, uh, the Samoan, Samoan side of my family uh, came from Samoa in 1970 and settled in Camp 4 housing. I was born and raised in Kalihi, low income, affordable housing, Kukui Gardens, the public housing of Camp 4 housing, Merai Homes, and Kukui Park Terrace. So when this state talks about building affordable housing and low income housing, I know what that looks like. I am just a stone throws away from Ala Park and seen the massive ill effects of Kukui Street deterioration of downtown due to massive urbanization. I was a city boy, growing up, child of the urban development, concrete jungle of Honolulu. Zero connection to the land, zero uh, opportunity, uh, accessibility to the Aina. My father is a bus driver and my mother is a hairstylist and they did the best they could to just continue to put a roof over our head and to survive the best that we could growing up in Kalihi. My mother's mother, Marie Kalia Arrington, is full-blooded Hawaiian, descended from Makaaina Na in Kau on the island of Mokuokiabe. And during World War, II, during World War I, her, grand, her parents brought her and her family. They left Big Island and settled in Honolulu in a Hawaiian homestead or in the Hawaiian um, area known as Damien Track. Today that's where the, the Honolulu airport is. My, my grandmother and my grandfather met during World War II at the hot spot right over here in Hotel Street. <laughs> my grandfather is a black man in the army. Um, and he met my grandmother. He told he used to tell me that he met his Polynesian princess, and he was so proud, um, you know, being a black man coming to Hawaii and, and, and meeting his Polynesian princess. Now, the lack of opportunity for our people has led to the mass exodus of Hawaiians from our ancestral homeland. They have to go to the mainland to seek a better life, to seek a job, to seek the very opportunities just to provide food education, and a quality of life for their children. My family included, out of my mother's, uh, my grandparents had 13 kids, out of my mother's 12 siblings, only three still live in Hawaii, and only one is a homeowner, be it on Hawaiian homelands. Now rampant, now what happened back in the 70s is rampant real estate and speculation has led to the urbanization of Honolulu and skyrocketing prices this has led to the displacement of many of our Hawaiian people. Back in the 70s and 80s, many of you guys will remember, our Hawaiian people were pushed onto the beaches of Wamanalo, pushed onto the beaches of Makaha, pushed onto the beaches of Mokulaia. And our state, in order to protect tourism, because they said that they didn't like the way the beach looked, went in and evicted all of our people off of the beach, our hardworking Hawaiians who just are trying to live on the land of their ancestors. Now today, you guys may not think of, think of it, but profit rules and all the people in this building continue to follow the big business. And guess what? Our Hawaiians now continue to uh, be pushed out. And now you see, instead of them going on the beaches, you see them underneath the freeway, underneath Nimitz Viaduct, yeah. right? Being pushed out. Now this, all in the name of modernization, all in the name of expansion, all in the name of tourism. Now this cancer that is urbanization, which has been controlled in Honolulu since you know the white man first came to our shore in 2007 has begun to creep out into Koalalo, the area that I live in now. The house that my mother was raised in, 
in Ho'ula. It's the same house that I'm raising my family in Mahohana in right now. Now, our language, our culture, and our Aina is under attack. The pressures to assimilate to an American view, the American values, continuously threaten our Hawaiian cultural traditions. In my community, the massive urbanization project known as Envision Laie and the Turtle Bay Expansion Project threatens the rural country character of Kola Loa, which is a rural Hawaiian community. We are under attack by Bill 47, also known as the 2012 Kola Loa Sustainable Communities Plan. During backroom deals with the Honolulu a city and county, Mayor Caldwell's office, Department of Planning and Permit, along with um, the for-profit arm of the LDS Church, Hawaii Reserves Incorporated, BYU Hawaii, as well as Polynesian Culture Center, they have gone and hijacked our community's plan and have inserted this massive urbanization development that will no longer keep the country country, that will no longer keep our rural country charm, and in fact, it violates traditional customary rights of Kuleana landholders right now who live on the land growing kalo in Laie. Bill 47 will not only create a new city in Malakahana, will also look to create a Malka connector road that will run right through Kuleana lands that will connect Kahuku, Laie, as well as Haula, violating the traditional customary rights of Native Hawaiians. The Turtle Bay expansion not only threatens native and endangered wildlife, but also plans to put up new condos and timeshares into uh, an expanding uh, Turtle Bay. But these new buildings and these new condos and these timeshares aren't going to provide a livable wage job for you and I. So I say, why are you going to build these condos and these timeshares and sacrifice our Aina for nothing? For what? Good. You know, so we can continue to be living as second class citizens in our own country. I say all of it to that. All of it to Bill 47. Keep the country country. Mahalo, Auntie. Mahalo, Auntie Didi. What we have done, my friends and I, along with the Fenoal Coalition, I kill. I represent the Kolalo Hawaiian Civic Club. We have created an organization, uh, a vehicle, a peaceful expression called Aloha Aina no Kolalo. We will have a march on Sunday, February 16th, a silent march in Malaikahana, where we'd like to invite all of you to come and join us in Kolalo to express our, our show our kue against this development which threatens our Hawaiian way of life and our very communities that we hold dear. We're saying, do not compromise our countryside for more development. Do not compromise our Hawaiian culture, our access to the Aino, our access to our water and our resources for more development. Keep the development in Honolulu, in the primary urban core. Keep the country, country. So what I want everybody to do right now, I want you to take out your smartphone, I know everybody gets smartphone right now. Everybody, hold up your smartphone. Pull up Facebook. Pull them up. I'll give you guys some time. I wait. I want you to go to www.facebook.com slash aloha aina koala loa. Like us on your Facebook. Like our Facebook page. Share our Facebook page with your friends, with your ohana. Encourage them to come out to our meeting, I mean to our march, our silent march, to protest this development. We have our table back here, we're going to see our joint table of IKEA Defend Oahu Coalition. Come on and join us. The last thing I want to say, I want to speak directly to our, our Keiki, our future over here. I'm so proud to see our Keiki from Halau Kumana, leading the way, leading the way. Mahalo for you guys. You can see here a couple of uh, uh, two very important people to myself, and I think they symbolize the fight, the changing of the, the makeup of this fight. 
my nephew Jacob Aki, as well as Lisa Grandinetti, both are UH students, freshmen at UH, on our planning committee to help organize this march. I got Robert Fried, another UH student out there, right there in the march. We're working together. I want you guys to know, all you young people out there, that you guys can be the change that we seek. We don't have to wait to these people in these buildings that have to make the decision. We don't have to wait to Governor Abercrombie for give us uh, uh, what we need. We just gotta take them, right? We just gotta take them back. And it all starts with every single one of you guys. Mahalo, mahalo kia mahalo for letting us speak. Aloha aina no ko'ola aloha. God bless. Woo!